get the D7 wrapped up so we can do a little review. Okay? All right, so here we go. Um, at the top of your paper, let's write the projectile motion formula. Anybody in here in physics? <coughs> okay, you might have seen this before. I'm not sure where you're at. Um, sometimes when we see this, these are H's, they are S's. Variables you know don't make a difference, right? So don't be panicked if you see an S instead of an H. Now, Let's talk about what all this is, projectile motion. So this is like I'm the quarterback of the football team and I throw the ball. That's a projectile in motion, right? So what does all this stand for? This is like a function notation, h of t. This is the height of the object at time t. T is measured in seconds, so T is the number of seconds. V sub naught, we call that V sub naught, V sub zero, V sub naught, is the initial velocity of the object. So let's just talk about a special case. If I'm standing on top of the building and I'm holding an egg, and I open up my hand, it's going to drop, right? What is the initial velocity of that egg? Zero. Zero. Now, if I'm standing up there, and Sam's down below, and I'm mad at Sam, and I go with my egg, then it has initial velocity, right? Yeah. Whatever, however hard I can throw it, as fast I can throw it. But if I drop something, the initial velocity is zero. Okay. Uh, by the way, this formula is for distances measured in feet. There is a different formula for uh, things measured in meters. But we're going to do feet, so this is feet. If I want you to do it in meters, you'll have the meter equation, okay? Works the same way as this one. H sub naught, if this is the initial velocity, what do you think this is? That's the initial height. So, again, if I'm standing on top of the building throwing eggs at Sam, however tall that building is, that's the initial height. Okay? Special case. What if I'm shooting off firecrackers from the ground? What's the initial height? Zero. zero. If you are on the ground, your initial height is zero. It's not going to say that. It's going to say the ball is on the ground or something, right? Okay. All right, so let's look at our problem and see if we can figure this out. A projectile is launched straight up from ground level with an initial, with an initial velocity of 256 feet. All right, so let's write our equation. H of t will be negative 16 t squared. This is the feet coefficient, so it's always going to be negative 16, unless your meters and it's a different number. Negative 16 t squared plus, okay, what's my initial velocity? 256 t don't forget there's a t hooked to that this is a quadratic a straight up from ground level what's my initial height zero. zero so this is my equation right here do not be confused it's function notation this is like y this is like x so this is going to be a parabola which makes perfectly good sense because if you launch something up from the ground doesn't it go like this mm -hmm. Yep, makes a parabola. Okay. When <coughs> will the projectile's height above ground be 768? So basically what's happened is you shot the thing up into the air and it's come back down. And we want to know when will it be 768? So here's 768. When will it be 768 feet above the ground? All right, here's your equation. How are you going to set it up? Uh, you plug in 768 for h. For, for the height, right here. This looks like two variables, but it's really one. You know, it's like f of x, it's like y. So this is, um, what, 768? 
I got a question. Uh -huh. is, is this at least 760? Oh, wait, I'm doing question A. Oh, okay, never mind. I'm doing question A. Yep. Then I'm gonna do B and C, but we're gonna do A first. Now, we're gonna do this with our calculator, but first we're gonna do it by hand because I want you to know you are capable of doing this by hand, okay? What would you do if we're not gonna, if we're not gonna graph it on our calculator? What are we gonna do, Emma? there with the calculator, Emma, then the size of the numbers is really irrelevant, right? If, when you're doing the quadratic formula. Um, are all these, by any chance, divisible by 16? I'm just going to try it here. Oh, yes. So let's go ahead and divide everything. I'm going to divide by negative 16. So I have 0, t squared, minus 250, or minus uh, 16. I forgot how many times did I say that went in? 48? Does that look about right? So I divided by negative 16, so I didn't have to mess with that negative. All right, does that factor? Why is that pulling on your lap? Um, that should factor, I think. 12 and 4. four. So t minus 4, t minus 12 equals 0. So I get two answers. Does that make sense in terms of the problem? No. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, well, it's squared. So anytime I solve a squared problem, I'm going to get two answers. But in the context of this, does it make sense that there are two? Yeah. yeah. Oh. It goes up it. and down. The ball's going up. And then, does it come down? Yeah. So there are two times, potentially two times. Obviously, if this were 768, there would only be one time, right? If this were 768, there would be no times. Um, but there's two. So when is the ball 768 feet above the ground? At four seconds and at 12 seconds. Would you agree with that? Now, when will it be at least 768? So this is when, these are like the dots right here, when it's exactly 768. When will it be at least 768? Just 4 to 12 seconds. 4 to 12. And since it's at least, we would go ahead and bracket that. That's right. So this is when it is at least. Or, uh, at least 768 feet. Everybody agree? Yeah. When will it be less than or equal to 768? 0 to 4. So that will be 0 to 4. Or, what else? Is it less than or equal to? Okay, I heard somebody say 12 to 0. That's not going to fly. 12. Infinity. 12 to infinity. Let's talk about that. What does T stand for? These are T values. T stands for seconds. You're telling me we're going to go on, this problem's going to go on infinitely. That's what you're telling me. What, what happens when I throw that ball up into the ground? Or up, up into the ground. Okay, up into yeah. the air. It's eventually going to come down and stop. stop. Isn't it going to stop right here? This is what I need to figure out. I need to figure out where it stops. Just find well, the Y is zero, but I need the X. <coughs> Mr. Madden. 16. How did you get 16, Mr. Madden? Oh, you did on your calculator? How would we do it without our calculator? What do you think? So since it's four seconds up to that first point, it would be all the way around. Right? What do we know about parabolas? They have something called symmetry. Symmetry. So I know that if it took it four seconds to get up, 
from that point down is going to be another four. Now we already did, um, oh no, we didn't, we didn't find the zeros for this one, did we? That's not 12 there. This is 12 right here. So did you say 16? Yeah. So the answer would be from 12 to 16. So from zero to four, it's below, and from 12 to 16, it's below. <coughs> When does the ball reach its maximum height? Eight seconds. Yep. Right? Parabolas are some, we call that the axis of symmetry. Right? What is the maximum height? No, graph it, George. You could graph it and find the maximum. I want you to do that. Is it double 768? Uh, probably not. That would be very interesting if it were, but I don't think so. Test? Oh. Well, don't stretch if you don't know. <laughs> Peggy? Oh, no, I was going to. You guys are going to put your hands up in the air. Oh, guys, what? It would be, well, I would 256 times 16. This equation right here gives us the height above the ground at time t. So, you can plug in. so if I want to know how high it is at time eight, don't I just plug in eight? Yeah. No, that's what you do. That's what you do. You just plug in eight, and that will tell you. And you knew the height, highest point, the maximum was at eight because a parabola is symmetric. Now, I'm sure your physics teacher will explain to you models like this, like this right here, are idealistic. I mean, they're like a perfect scenario, like no wind blowing and you know, all kinds of weird things. Um, so it's the best model we have, but it isn't absolutely perfect. Okay, good job. All right, constructing a box with no top. All right, so an open box is formed by cutting squares from the corners and folding up the flaps. So I pasted that little picture in there to kind of see what's going on. What size corners should be cut to yield a box with a volume of 125 cubic inches. All right, so we've got our, here's our piece of paper. Um, and the paper is 12 by 15. We're cutting out these corners folding up the flaps. Can you, can you visualize what's happening? Mm -hmm. Folding up the flaps. And we want the volume of the resulting box to be 125. And we're calling the little cutouts X. All right, who's got a thought? This is one of the most, I want to say famous, but kind of dumb word that Every free calculus student in the world does this problem. Every calculus student will do it without a calculator. We'll do this one with our calculator. Okay, let's start at the beginning. How do you find the volume of a box? Length. This is a box. Length times width times height. Right? Or whatever words you want to use. It's all three dimensions, right? Times each other. So volume is length times width times height. So tell me, remember, the paper was 12 by 15, but we've cut some pieces out of it. So how wide is the actual box? These are the flaps coming up. 12 how minus wide 2X. is what? 12 minus 2x. 12 minus 2x. That is the actual width of the paper, or now the box. What's the length of it? 15 minus 2x. What's the height of it when you fold up those flaps? x. And we want the volume to be 125, right? All right, we're going to do this one on our calculator, right? But I want everybody listening because we're going to set our window appropriately. So 
I want you to think about X and what X stands for. What is the minimum X? Zero. Doesn't X have to be positive? Could it be 0.1? Yeah, could it be 0.01? Yeah, it could be anything bigger than zero. What is the maximum X value? Yes. Thank you, Lewis. Why is the maximum six? Because you have to multiply negative two by six and you get you 12 minus 12. Exactly. The smallest dimension is 12. If you're going to cut a corner out of both, imagine, if you hold a piece of paper. If it's 12 across and you're going to cut a, piece, a chunk out of both sides, that chunk can't be more than six, can it? If you only have 12 inches to start with, you can't take seven and seven. That won't work, right? This is called the domain of the problem. That's a big, big deal. Domain is the possible X values. And in this problem, it's zero to six. Now, let's talk about the Y's. What does Y stand for in my problem? What's the Y stand for? Y stands for the volume. So tell me about the minimum volume. Zero. Zero. Now, I don't know what the maximum volume is. That will be a problem that we will do the next time we get to this situation. But I do know that I want this particular volume to be 125. Yeah. So I'm just going to pick a maximum that's kind of big. I might go with uh, 200. That will give me plenty of room to work. I may, that may not be big enough to see the maximum, but I don't care. I want it to be 125. So let's go ahead, sketch it, and see what happens. Now, you can, you do not need to multiply that out. Just put it in the parentheses, that's fine. You can move the 125 over. I'm going to leave the 125 here and graph two equations and do intersections. Okay? So here I go. Parentheses, 12 minus 2x. Parentheses, 15 minus 2x, and x, and then 125. Oh, I did see a max in there. <laughs> Not that it matters, it's just I do see it. So, this, using the window I suggested, I got a picture that looks kind of like this and this. Now, the curve, this guy right here, is not a parabola. Do you understand that? No symmetry, of, as far as having an axis of symmetry, for this guy. He's a cube, right? So it looks kind of parabola-ish, but it isn't. And then here's my 125 line coming across. At these two points right here, would you agree that the volume is exactly 125? All right, let's find them. So this is going to be, for me, a second calc intersect. Oh, yeah. Oh, where did you second calc intersect? Second calc intersect if you typed in separate equations like I did. I got point nine four two. Anybody match those? <laughs> yes. So let's look at the questions again and make sure we answer them correctly. <coughs> what size corner should be cut out to yield a box with a volume of exactly 125? 
right here, right? 0.942, and that was inches. Now, we're gonna make a volume more than 125. So if you want your volume, this is your volume equation right here. If you want your volume to be more than 125, won't that be everything in between them, but not including them? Isn't the volume higher at that point? Okay, and then I bet they want to know, um, should we cut the yellow box with a volume of at most 125? So what would that one look like, Commissioner? Could be. Did it say at most? Yeah, so at most means, well, that's okay. I can include these. Now, the zero and the six cannot be included. They're like the infinities on your number line. Can X equal zero in this situation? No. no, because if it did, you wouldn't have a box, right? Can X equal six in this situation? No, because no. again, if X is six, you have, you've taken everything, it's all gone. So those are gonna be open, but because it says at most, that means we can include the 125, so those are included. Okay? All right, that homework's due Monday. Get your review sheet out, let's take a quick look at it. And one more time, I apologize for wasting all this paper. That was not good on my part. Maybe we can find a use for the back of it sometime, but here's what I need for you to do. All right, so I'm just I'm gonna tell you now. When do I have class again with you people? Tomorrow? 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 All right, oh, this is gonna be great. Tomorrow? You are going to come to class. We are not going to have time to do all of these problems. The answers are posted in Stewardship. We will not have time to do all of these. Your job tonight is not to do all of them. But your job tonight is to look through and identify ones that we need to talk about tomorrow. Because I'll, I'll, I have nothing planned for tomorrow except, all right, what do we need to do? And he'll say something, and you'll say something, and we'll do as many as we can for the whole period, right? And then Monday, or Tuesday, we're gonna have a quest. It's not gonna be a 100-point test, it's gonna be a quest. This is review material, so Mr. Shaddy and I don't feel that it warrants 100 points, but it'll be big. I mean, I don't know, 50, 60, something like that. I don't know, whatever we decide on. Um, and that'll be Tuesday now. Everybody clear on that? Okay, so what are we going to do tonight? You're going to go through the review and pick out what you need to do. Now, last year I had a group, and I do this every year, so I start. I don't need to review. In my mind, honor students don't need to review. But I want you to do well, I want you to be comfortable, so I don't mind one day of review. I don't need it. No, I'm not, not writing. I, I don't need it. It's for you. If you're not going to put the time and energy into it tonight to look through it, and not say do it, but look through it and say, I don't know who what she's talking about. In other words, you come tomorrow unprepared, you won't review again. All right? So come prepared if you want to review it. Right? Okay, that's your job. Home, that homework is not due until Monday, but of course you can do it too if you want and get it turned in. All right.